Hello and welcome back to my nail corner. Let's see if I even remember how to do this. It's been so long. I'll get into all of that in a minute, but first I want to show you all of these goodies that Maniology sent over to me last month to play with and show you guys. I was so excited when they reached out and wanted to um, just get involved with showing off some stamping on my channel. I love stamping and I don't do it often enough. So this was one of the polish kits that I selected from the website to try out. I was so impressed with this packaging. Look how secure those are and just what a nice way to store them. These were the colors in the set. I will link everything below, but I just did two coats of those on clear swatches and look how opaque they are. Are. It's the Snowflake Waltz Polish Collection, I believe. So I thought those were gorgeous and they swatched out just beautifully. They also sent over this brush, which I think is such a great thing to have on hand if you're doing stamping. You know, I usually do have dip powder on my nails when I stamp and so you don't want to use acetone and like rub it off and mess it up but you can use this cleanup brush around your cuticle line and on your skin with your nail polish remover or acetone or whatever just to clear and clean off any stamping that you get on your skin and it's so pretty I love those little clear gems it's just such a nice nice cleanup brush so that was a great addition they also sent over this sticky base coat and I'm going to use this in today's video so I will talk a little bit more about that. I already had their um, smudge free top coat on hand um, and I will talk about that in, in a little bit also. Um, but the sticky base coat is a really nice thing to have on hand when you are stamping and I will talk more about why when I use it in a little bit. So they also sent over this super cute and very functional tool. I was I thought this was so adorable and I don't know why I haven't had one but I am so glad I do now. So if you need to wipe off your nails and you don't want to mess up what's on your right hand, this picks up a cotton ball which you can then um, get your nail polish remover or acetone on and clean up that nail. So that is so handy and where was this all the years that I was doing like regular nail polish on my nails? or my toenails and just somehow messed it up when I was trying to clean off a nail. I just think that's such a cool tool. So I also picked a couple of plates. That one I'm going to be using in today's video. This one I thought was really cool. It has kind of like marbly designs. I guess that's what you'd call them. I will put all in the description box all the things that I'm showing you today as well as just, you know, like I usually would what I actually use in today's video. Um, but the stamping plate was really cool. I love plaid, so it was just like a, a no-brainer to pick that one. Now, this is a starter kit. So if you've never stamped before, you don't have any of the things, you can go to the Maniology uh, website and pick a starter kit. So this is the stamp, um, or the plate that came with the starter kit that I picked. Um, there are all different ones, so some have more contents, some have, you know, like there's different selections. So you'll also get a little stamper, which is in my left hand there, and um, a scraper card. And so if you don't have those, this is a great little kit to pick up so that you have kind of the stamping essentials before you get started. So it's just a nice clear jelly stamper. Um, I think the first time I ever stamped, I didn't have a clear jelly stamper and I don't know why they even make such a thing because how do you know where to place it on your nail if you can't see through the jelly stamper? I don't know, maybe there's a secret I'm unaware of. And then this came with a cute like, like stuck together. I was like, how's this gonna work? Oh, duh, they come apart. So it came with black stamping polish, which like everybody needs to have. And then um, the smudge free top coat is the other one. So really, really great. The starter kit kind of comes with everything you need if you just wanna give things a try. And then if you're gonna get the starter kit, I would recommend adding the sticky base if you're um, if you have gel allergies or gel sensitivities um, and like I said I'll explain more about that later but that's the only thing that I would add on to us in, in addition to a starter kit um, if that's something that you are gonna need so like I said we'll talk about the stamping process in a minute here but first I'm gonna get some dips on my nails and catch up with you guys so 
For this mani, I reached for my mani boss, and I'm going to be using that really light pink. It's called Glamour. It has a really nice little shimmer to it, and it's a, it's, it's a dip I've reached for multiple times. And I'm not often one to like repeat, but a light pink that's just flawless is a staple in my opinion, that everyone should have in their collection. I mean, that is if you like pink. I guess if you don't like pink, then don't put a light pink in your collection. But um, I do like pink. And so a light pink, especially with like a little shimmer to it, is just a must have in my opinion. So I went ahead and dipped as usual and cleaning up around that cuticle. And um, my right hand is totally dating this Manny for you guys. I recorded this last month, right before the holidays, and then life got away with me. Uh, we just had a, a busy but good Christmas season. We jumped right into the new year with some busyness. My husband and I got a quick ski day in before um, we took some time off from life to just kind of recover and uh, regroup after the holidays. So really when most people took off around Christmas and New Year's, um, we didn't. In fact, we even homeschooled. I homeschooled the kids through that time and then we took some time off in January to just kind of have family time and that was great. So um, even in all that rest time, I kind of put my phone aside as much as possible and just, just kind of checked out. So I'm back. I will. Um, I have another video that I recorded that I was really excited to share um, and didn't get it up before this kind of before the holidays hit. So that'll be coming as well. And I was excited about these. So um, I'm excited to finally be sharing them with you guys. So my right hand Manny is very Christmas themed and I did that like I said right before Christmas it was my Christmas Manny and those are triple D colors. Uh, the flaky silvery on my index finger that is Candy Cane Lane. It's discontinued and I'm so so sorry because it's one of my favorites and that's why I put it on anyway. I hate to tease you guys and wear something that is no longer available but some of them are just faves that I have to especially on a holiday. I'm like, I'm going to pull this out. It's for me. I'm going to enjoy it so much. Um, and then I tried the little um, candy cane nail on my ring finger and it was so fun and so cute and so easy. I just used a dotting tool and stamping polish to create those dots kind of around the circle or the edge of the nail. Um, and it was pretty fun. It, it felt very extra. Um, and that just seemed appropriate for the Christmas season. So now I am dipping into, um, oh, what is this one called? I'll put it in the description box. I always forget that it's like rose, ro it might be rose glamour, rose glam. It's, it's a beautiful rose gold. Um, it doesn't lean brown. Like I've had a lot of rose golds over the years and some of them lean more, more to the brown side. This has a actually almost a little bit of like lavender in it or something and I think maybe that's what makes it not pull brown on me. And so I I love 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 this rose gold and she also has I think it's, I keep coming up with what I think the name is but I, I'm not going to try it over and over again. I'll put it in the description box below. But um, Manny Balls also sells like a um, like a chunky glitter version of this that has kind of this base but with some chunky glitters in it. Um, so that's really pretty if you're going for like the chunky glitter look. But what you will see in this I think I think I'll show, I usually show both dips if I do them, is that I only did one dip of this glitter. It was so flawless, full coverage, that when I went to do a second dip, I was like, I don't need one. It was completely unnecessary. Now, what I do want to mention is if you are not dipping over um, an enhancement already, like right now I have a thin layer of builder gel on my nails and they're quite short. Um, if you're not dipping over builder gel or a jelly tip, I would not recommend doing one dip and then a dip of clear and being done. For strength for your nails, I would really recommend at minimum two dips of the glitter or color you're using and then a dip of clear. Um, if you just do one and then a dip of clear, you're likely going to get like cracking and that's not fun. Nobody likes getting a day or two into their mani, you jam your finger into something and you hear that kind of crack and there it is. And then you have to wonder if you cracked your nail underneath and that's that's no fun. So only, only do I recommend doing one dip if it shows such full coverage. Um, 
if you have an enhancement already on your nails to kind of give that added strength and, and fortification for your nail. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip through a second coat of this really nice light pink um, glamour on my nails. And then we are gonna clear cap and then we're gonna get into some stamping, which I am really excited to talk to you guys about because it's been a while since I did stamping on my channel. And Maniology is a great brand. I've tried um, several different brands of stamping supplies and you just can't go wrong with maniology I've had such good experience every single time and um, and I just have nothing but good things to say about their products and their selection on their website it is it is vast so I will be right back with you after I catch my breath Alright, so I've gone ahead and filed and buffed off camera and now we are going to get set up for stamping. So I have my stamping plate and I'm going to get those two polishes out. I thought they would be a really nice uh, pairing with the mani that I put on my nails already. And um, oh, this is my new Stanley cup that Megan from Manny Boss sent over in a Christmas package for me, keeping me trendy because I had not pulled the trigger on getting one yet, even though I wanted one so badly. And somehow she knew just the right thing to send and it is matte black and it is perfect. She is such a sweetheart. So I have my stamping polishes out, my stamping plate, my stamper, and my scraping cart. So I am setting myself up for success with sticky base coat. So sticky base coat is not gel or anything like it. So if you have a gel sensitivity, these are safe products to use for you. So it's going to apply just like a clear base coat, but it is going to have a tacky layer on it. This is great, by the way, even if you're just a regular nail polish wearer or you, um, I usually just use regular nail polish on my toes because I ain't got no time for soaking off acetone or my uh, gel or anything off my toes usually with acetone. So um, the sticky base coat is just a great nail polish base coat, but it leaves, like I said, a tacky layer on the surface. So as we go, I'll explain to you why this is really helpful when stamping. Um, but these are the two polishes I pulled out and once that sticky base coat dries, we will be good to go with stamping. So the stamping plate as it comes is what you're seeing here. It comes in a nice protective sleeve and that is a blue film that you need to remove before stamping. If you do not remove that, you're not gonna be able to pick up the image. So you're gonna pull that off, just like the protecting, protective coating on like an appliance when it comes or whatever. I also recommend having tape or a lint roller available and you'll see why in a second, but it's just a great cleanup tool while stamping. Um, so those are like laser etched images into a metal. So if it's got that blue film on it, it's gonna do you no good to stamp. So make sure you remove that before stamping. Otherwise you are gonna be so frustrated and wanna cry and be like, Kate, why did you ever tell me to do stamping? Because this is, this is horrible. So I was trying to decide what I wanted to do. And in the interest of full transparency, what I wanted to do was not what I ended up doing. 
I loved what I ended up doing. However, I was like, man, I've seen these cool images where you do like the, the see the individual lines and you kind of like create a plaid pattern instead of using like the existing plaid on the left. And I thought it's been a long time since I stamped. Why would I not just go in for fancy right out of the gate? It did not go as planned. So I started fresh and this is what I ended up deciding to do. And I loved how it turned out. I'll explain in a second why the first, well, I'll do it right now. So I wanted to show by hopefully trial and error for you guys right there. I was like, this image is no good. And what it was is it's too much stamping polish on the plate. So error number one. So I used my fancy little acetone on my little tool cotton ball holder and cleaned that up. So then we're going to go in for a second try. And the second try was, um, I if I remember correctly, I went like spread it out a little bit more with the brush and then scraped. And I should, I should have slowed this down, I apologize, but you can see it's kind of smeared towards the right side there. And I was like, mm -mm, no, we're going to do it again. So I did it a third time. And this was after I already screwed up my first attempt, but it didn't, I don't know. It doesn't, some people find this, can, can find it frustrating if it's not going well, but it's such an easy process to just clean off your plate and try again if it didn't go well. So really you want a, a generous, but not flowing, I don't know. You want enough, but not too much. So it takes a couple times to try to figure it out sometimes. And then I like to roll my jelly stamper like you just saw. So kind of, I rolled kind of from the bottom up. And then what you have is this really nice line. Now the, the lint roller, as you saw, or clear tape, whatever you have handy, is what you want for removing the excess lines from your stamper. So that I find the lint roller to be the most handy. I used to have a mini one, you know, you, you can get in the travel section at like Target. I think that's the best because it's easiest to manipulate and get super close to whatever image you do want to leave on your stamper. So then you just take that jelly stamper and line it up with where you want it and then press it onto your nail. It's that simple. Now, the sticky base coat is important because if you let that nail polish, that stamping polish kind of dry on the stamper and then you go to, to put it on top of your dip powder, it's not going to it's not going to grip to your nail. So you might get like a little bit of a transfer of the image, but the whole thing is not going to transfer to the nail. So that sticky polish just grabs onto the image and then transfers it to the nail. So, so the sticky base really makes a difference. If you don't have sticky polish and you want to try this, a gel base coat, if you don't have a gel allergy, um, is also a great solution. So I went ahead and rolled the next line that I want messed it up when I was trying to remove the excess. And so we're going to do that one more time. So the first image I used was to the far right. It's like those lined up diamonds. And then the next line over is like the same thing, but they're hollow diamonds. So it's like a kind of like an Argyle pattern. Um, and so I'm going to do them one on top of the other. So you'll see that in just a second here. This stamping plate is so versatile with all those different things that you could kind of, you could even do like the plaid pattern that's pre-existing and then add lines over it if you wanted kind of an accent color or something like that. So this stamping plate was really fun. The The first thing I had tried to do um, didn't work out and I, I want to practice it and get better at it to figure out why, but I just had a hard time. I was doing just straight lines to try to do some plaids and um and I couldn't get the lines as straight as I wanted, if that makes sense. Because like your nail is kind of curved, especially with dip powder on it. They just weren't showing as straight as I wanted. And and if I'm doing lines on a nail, like I want them to show up like as straight as possible. So I was being a little bit nitpicky and thought I don't I, I didn't feel proud of how it turned out. So I went with this, which I just thought was very cute, very simple, which is kind of my style. I like things to be pretty simple, not too like I don't know, not too busy and not too in your face, but I really thought that this was cute, a cute little accent nail and I liked how it turned out. And so I was like, I, I like this. We're going to go with this. Keep things simple. Um, so one of the other techniques I've done before on my channel, but it's been a couple years is reverse stamping. So you can do images. They have stamping plates with like characters on them or flowers or whatever. And you can pick up the outline on your stamper, stamper and then use little dotting tools to color, basically color it in on your stamper, let it dry 
and then transfer it onto your nail. Now that is something you want stamp, uh, sticky base coat for because you're letting that nail polish dry on the stamper and then transferring it to the nail. So you really need something sticky on the nail for it to pick it up. Um, I will try to remember and link up in the cards up here in the corner that stamping video. So when I just said reverse stamping and it made no sense to you, check this out because it's really quite fun. And if you're, if you're, sorry, ugh, I can't talk. If you are someone who likes coloring things in or just like fine detail work, it's pretty fun. I, I've had a blast when I did it the first time and I don't know why I haven't done it since, but um, oftentimes I, I don't, I don't know, it takes some time. And so if I'm in a hurry or just don't have the time to be um, that detail oriented or creative, then I don't, I don't do it. And I just love dipping so much in general that having anything on my nails feels like an accomplishment a lot. Um, so really easy cleanup. You can see all of that on the paper towel. So that's just gonna get folded up and thrown away. I usually just slide my stamping plate back into that sleeve. Um, if you get an accumulation of stamping plates, um, Maniology, I believe, sells like a like a book. You know those cases we used to all have for, I'm dating myself if you guys are younger than me, we used to have for CDs. Like I used to have one in my car with all my CDs in a sleeve. They make um, those books to sell stamping, or put to store um, stamping plates in. So that's super handy. So I'm just using that cleanup brush they sent over and I'm dipping it into a little bit of acetone and just cleaning up that polish that's on my nail. Um, so that's a really great tool. You could also say you got a little bit excess on your nail You could use it the same way to just kind of clean up around the image that you do want to keep So a cleanup tool like this is really handy um, I also I mean like you could use it for gel polishes if you need to clean up around your cuticle or anything like that So that's really handy to have um, on your desk. I think I said handy about three times, which is punny when you're doing something nail related on your hands so enough of that um, and then you just want to wipe that off before you store it um, and then if it so those brushes tend to especially because you're using acetone and things to clean them off they tend to come out a little bit stiff so if you just have rubbing alcohol or something just dip it in that and it'll loosen it up so now I'm getting into my top coat I have pulled out my Manny Boss gels and I am applying a thin layer of gel base uh, if you need gels and you don't have any on hand, you need to stock up and you're shopping Manny Boss because you realize that these dips are um, magic, then you need to check out their gels. So she has Hema Free gels. These are, this is the base coat. It is a nice, thin, smooth application. I have nothing but good things to say about her gels. I also have been really liking her sheer pink builder gel as the overlay on my nails. Um, it's just it's almost clear, but just has a little hint of pink to brighten up your nail beds a little bit. And I really, really like that. You know, I for a long time was rocking the pink lace builder gel by Manny Boss. And it's just this beautiful, soft, milky pink builder gel. So when your dip powder pops off, it's like you have another Manny underneath. So a big fan of Manny Boss, definitely check that out. Um, but if you're using a gel top coat over dip powder, I highly recommend this step, which is doing a gel base first. So gel top coat does not like to adhere to a smooth surface like dip powder after you've buffed and filed, it's nice and smooth, which is how you want it. But gel top coat doesn't like to stick to that. But if you apply a gel base first and cure that for 30 seconds and then go in with your gel top coat, then your gel top coat is gonna have something to stick to. It's gonna hold on to that tacky layer that gel base leaves on the surface kind of like a sticky base coat for stamping um, and then it'll keep your gel top coat from peeling up off of that nail so highly recommend going that route so we're going to do a little bit of a mix here i decided to go glossy top coat over my sparkly glitter nails golden rose you saw i added the text in there um, so that's going to be a glossy top coat and then i went with this matte top coat from manny boss for the two nails with the stamping on it. I really like a matte top coat a lot of times over stamping. It just like, I don't know, sometimes the glossiness can kind of distract the eye from the image that you stamp on. So a lot of times I like to go matte and I thought this turned out really cute and it was a good combination of glossy and matte. So there you can go, if my camera will focus in, there you can go and see the little um, kind of accent the um, rose gold color over that kind of wine tone and how that turned out. 
So I hope you guys will try stamping if you haven't before. I hope I um, gave you all the information you needed. And I should mention that down below in the description box, I have a discount code for Maniology. It is an affiliate code, so I get a small commission, I think, from that. But definitely use that if you're shopping because who doesn't like a discount? So I'm applying my cuticle oil as I always do to keep that skin around my nails healthy and hydrated after I just put it through all that I did with filing and buffing and chemicals and all those things. You want to keep that skin healthy. So thanks for being here today. I really enjoyed chatting with you guys and hopefully I'll be back real soon. I hope you guys all had a really Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and that your January is off to a great start. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye now.